Now, this is from Bellular, Bellular Gaming, and he, I feel like I've watched, I watch a fair number of his videos um, when I can. I enjoy hearing his videos about WoW lore a lot, and I feel like he has been bringing up FXAV very often <laughs> in his videos lately, especially the ones about story, where he's like, I really wish that they would just take a page out of Final Fantasy's book and, like, I don't know, develop their characters better. It's been in almost every video I've heard him, like, bring up Final Fantasy XIV. Okay, this situation is pretty damn cool, and honestly, the likes of World of Warcraft could probably learn from it. Final Fantasy XIV has not had a content patch since 5.55 added some MSQ quests all the way back in May. When was that? The small handful. Wait, what? Really? 5.55 release date. What? That was May. <laughs> that was May 25th. What was in it? What was in 5.55? Don't tell me it was. It wasn't the near. It wasn't. Was it? Uh. Okay. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Of patches since have just been minor systems adjustments and the removal of a lockout. So complete content drought until Endwalker, right? Well, usually the content gap between the final patch and a new expansion it can be long and it can be brutal. It has not been that bad. In a state of almost undeath until it has not felt that bad at all this time. It definitely has felt a lot better than the one for uh, between. Stormblood and Shatterbringers. It explodes with life again. That's an almost natural thing in MMOs. Wait, did he say it's undead? Or brutal, leaving a game in a state of almost undeath until it explodes with life again. <laughs> Is that weird? What? That's such a brutal metaphor, man. Leaving the game in a state of undeath until it explodes with life again. What? That's, that's awesome. I, I really enjoyed that. That's an almost natural thing in MMOs. Or at least we thought so. Watching FF14 over the last few months has shown us that it does not have to be that way. I could go off about horizontal progression. Oh, so these are things that have been entertaining us since May. Uh-huh. Okay, well, what, what's missing here is the the ERP. That's the not... Relic <laughs> grinds, social aspects, or there being a lot of content to catch up on if you're a new player to the game. But those things are pretty damn obvious. They're just static bits of the game. They're always there, so they keep the game at this base high level of... Man, that was so sweet. Remember that from the Rising event? Naoki Yoshida comes and talks to you and tells you how much he loves you and how cool you are. Yeah, content, which is great and all, but... It doesn't bring the same energy that new content, the new things <laughs> don't. <laughs> he's, wait, he's really showing the uh, <laughs> Blue Mage run of turn two. He's, he's actually, yeah. So, this is pretty exciting how does content. Not have a single content patch, but still be injected with energy. Well,. Since 5.55, there have been seven seasonal events. That's actually more than one per month. Now, obviously, I'm coming from a World of Warcraft background. And in WoW, to be honest, we don't put a lot of weight into our seasonal events anymore. Some of them, certainly, like Brewfest, Midsummer, Winter Vale, Hallow's End, they do have some cool little things attached. But the ones that bring something interesting to do are a bit more few and far between. And... Being real here, they have not changed much, if at all, in upward of 10 years. Do them once and they're done. Over Were there not any new rewards for the Hollow's End event? Or whatever it's called in WoW, the Halloween event in WoW this time? Like, did they not update any of the rewards for that? Or like, it's kind of like, okay, I guess, for the the same Headless Horseman to come back every year. Like, there's there's something to be said for the nostalgia of always having that same event, but were there actually no new rewards added? They did add new stuff. There were new toys, but nothing important. What other events were there between... Mm, I don't even know what else happened 
usually at Christmas they have a new uh, present for you under the tree. <laughs> Right. For an FF though, the events feel so lively. Since 5.55, there have been five events that have brought some- I will, I'm sorry to pause so many times in two minutes, but I just have a, like, I have a lot of uh, things I'm suddenly thinking of. One event that would have been really big deal right now would have been the BlizzCon event. The BlizzCon online event at least, with like the BlizzCon rewards, like that would have been a pretty- Pretty big deal happening. Like that was that was a big thing you always look forward to in November. So to have that missing, I think, sucks extra. Of FF14 players got was the Make It Rain campaign. I actually missed it, but <laughs> for almost a month, the Manderville Gold Saucer points earned had a 50% bonus applied, and there was also a heist for people to investigate. Make it rain. So first up, this obviously acted as a big rallying cry for players, especially the new wave, to get lost in the gold saucer for a few weeks. A lot of people were introduced to the fashion report, which itself is a pretty damn cool little system. Is it? We lost a few good amount of chocolate. I feel like fashion report could be more interesting, could be more fun than it is. Chocobo racing and overall, Chocobo racing. it was just cool. I mean, even not being super in at the time, I remember watching the videos. <laughs> Somewhat similar, actually, it's still to, good a, to a, have a real life saucer. fair. I suppose that's how it felt. Killing Blizzard, what? Now, the next one wasn't what very are you much. It was the <laughs> what are you talking Oh, it's ice cream. Okay. Moonfire Fair, a two <laughs> week long summertime <laughs> event with a new quest attached to I was like, look, this, is, this has gone too far, frankly. And sometimes <laughs> some fates. Now, this one had a new award, uh, award attached. It was the polar bear mount that you see all that over. That was the place. awesome. Drew some this was such a good mount because it's a cool mount any time of year. Laughs because, of course, it was a polar bear mount. It would almost remind you of like the BlizzCon polar bear mount, and it all hit during peak anti Blizzard entertainment uh, sentiment. What? And of course, you're killing <laughs> a Blizzard of Bombards. <laughs> it wasn't a massive set of content about what a, a take, 15 to 20 man. minute quest and a grindable fate for some cute rewards, but hey, it was a new thing in the game. Break some, some, you know, breaks up the monotony, but something new. I didn't think There's about certainly an argument that. to be made against not bringing old fun content back, like the jump tower that was there in 2018, but I suppose that's the price of, uh, you know, having some new stuff. Now, there is, of course, more. I didn't think about it like that. This uh, polar bear mound is like <sighs> seeing it as the da, da, da. reminder of good go. BlizzCon rewards from the past. That's so sad, honestly. <laughs> right after the last one ended, the game moved right into another one. This time, The Rising, which is the yearly anniversary celebration. No real special content here, but it's a time of you year, take of that course, back. where the dev team is extending their thanks to the players and kind of What do you mean, no the, special content from the, whatever you the past year? It's a personal speech to the player base, and it's delivered to you and your character by Yoshi P. It's the specialist content. And, uh, I mean, there's kind of nothing else like it, really, in just about any other game. Yeah. It is a really cool touch. And again, it is one that did waves on the internet, showing the importance of these events and how they can just keep people talking. This is actually exactly what my interview with Yoshi P was like. Like, to me, um, I felt like I was in this ethereal space and uh, he's like glowing and uh, he's telling me everything that I'm trying really hard to remember. ...about the game and, well, keep it in the headlines. Yeah, it was just like that, it was just like that. The next one was the return of a crossover and it's one that shows just how much the team love the properties that they work with. I mean, that's pretty obvious if you look at past FF games being referenced in FF14. Over the course of the short quest chain to find a way home for Noctis, it culminates in the fight against Garuda. Uh, now, if you've seen any FF15 uh, at all, you'll have seen Noctis teleport around the place like mad with his uh, warp strike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because these devs all seem to love FF as much as the players do and understand what <laughs> yeah. we think is, is going to be cool, that was so uh, easy. we get to do that as well. And the result of this is the really unique solo duty against Garuda, which is uh, totally designed around using Warp Strike at the right time to dodge a whole bunch of her attacks and yeah. do bonus damage with Noctis. I had no problem with that all in all, quest at all. Well, it's about 45 minutes of questing. Uh, of course, Noctis's outfit, a farm will fate. <laughs> I think uh, just Garuda took me 45 minutes. Yeah, some actual rewards, and of course, the ability to buy the car with MGP. 
That's then, of course, there is the other big Square Enix crossover, Dragon Quest X, which, again... Peculiar Petrus. Yeah. I, the thing is, with this quest, I did it a long time ago, so I, I don't think I did it when and it came back. And made a return. <sighs> Puff Puffs. <laughs> and they just have so much fun with their quest presentation and the in-game cinematics here. It's all really cool. We get to watch oh, the, that's the, sexy the one. clip of Preach yeah. getting his Puff Puff. All, all the content, really, over these five events. It really does uh, amount to no more than a few hours of quests them. and a few more, like, whoa, you know, whoa, just whoa. bits of fate grinding for rewards. <laughs> Two of the crossovers are just returning events from buff, a few years buff. ago. But all of this stuff is happening with there being just nothing else <laughs> happening in the game. And that means that they fill a gap. They add some flavor. They make it still feel alive. And I'll be honest. I, I didn't hear anything that he said during that clip. <laughs> not even talked about the Moogle events. Moogle event. The Moogle treasure events are just cool. I mean, the idea of adding a currency, a regular tombstones, to a uh, you know to a whole bunch of content and then hand selecting a bunch of existing oh, yes. rewards to sell for that currency, it is a really interesting way to just throw some variety into a big cosmetic farm that I guess is the sort of thing an MMO always ends up having. And of course it keeps the queues populated. It's a pretty does it keep the keys populated? Because this year, or this time, with the Moogle Tombstone event, we were asked to collect tomes, but one of the ways we could do that was by making a fully blue mage raid, going into turn two of coils and just blazing through it. And I think under 30 seconds, you can probably clear the whole thing with your full blue mage raid. We actually showed a little clip of it at the front, so I feel like he will mention it because I finished this in like 20, 30 minutes, maybe. I got the jacket and I got, um, like I think I got over a hundred tomes in maybe half an hour, if that. Wait, you ran prey 20 times? <laughs> you ran, you ran here. Why, why, you ran, why did you run prey 20 times? Do you not have blue mage level? <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's horrible. <laughs> We, me and Matt, come from World of Warcraft, where, largely speaking, you are limited creatively in your gameplay. There's, of course, a ton of talents and gear choice, and that's all pretty cool, yeah. but if something gets too out of line or is in an odd part of the game, it can get nerfed. The fun police is what we call them in, in World of Warcraft land. And, well, here's an example. Oh. People started making speed farming sets. Oh, I know. <laughs> This is the this is the build up. We're building up, getting to talk about the blue mage thing. Okay, okay, okay. That's for all rates, right? So you can just run really, really, really fast. Blizzard noticed, and then the speed sets were nerfed into the ground. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So those players okay. just had to go more. Slow. They always do the fun detected. Now, how does yeah. it apply to this? Well, if you've been paying attention, <laughs> then you will have seen the blue mage tombstone farming that is going on. Now, Blue Mage, <laughs> if you're unfamiliar, and initially I was, because it's bonkers, it's a limited job. So the cap right now is level 80, of course. It only goes to level 70, and it's actually disqualified for most forms of content in the game. Right. But that's because it's a Blue Mage. It's a staple of the FF series, and its gimmick is that it learns enemy abilities. It's got 104 spells that it can learn, and some of them are just bonkers. So what he's about to show you is a clip of peak Blue Mage skill content, okay? Like, you need to be really good at Blue Mage to be able to pull this off. Uh, instant kills, 90% damage reductions, stuns that ignore resistance. Clearing They're busted savage. on it, purpose. Blue Mage is just cool. But anyway, this is relevant because people found a way to farm the hell out of the irregular tombstones with Blue Mage shenanigans. <laughs> because basically a party of go. them can absolutely delete Coil's turn two with the right combo of spells. And I mean, <laughs> look, this happened for both me and Matt. It's our first instinct Where as well players. We're oh, just like, uh, so when's that going to get nerfed? It's been two weeks and the fun police haven't shown up. Yeah. What? That's weird. In fact, <laughs> these players who have now figured out how to use the game mechanics uh, cleverly, they are going to uh, max out their MGP, they're going to get some mounts, they're going to fill their bags with goodies from the event. <coughs> and while yeah, it may seem a bit abusive, do you know what? So what? It is a bit of player-driven content that is enabled by an event. 
because <laughs> if they nerfed this, a bunch of those people just wouldn't bother. But hey, now guess what's happening? They're logging into FF14 and paying a subscription. So next time it turns up, <laughs> this event will give us a different list of rewards that I mean, you know, just give us new stuff. And maybe those... I don't know. I don't know about the paying a subscription like argument because you can... Like I, I thought that the Moogle Toadstone event was... In, put in place so that you would have something to do, something to occupy you for the time between when they started it and when the expansion launches so that you will stay subscribed. But if you just do Blue Mage shenanigans, you can finish it all in about half an hour and then you can unsub until I guess. I think that they're just too busy to worry about it. Right. I feel like they're so busy right now trying to finish the expansion that they heard somebody was like, hey guys, hey, uh, did you hear about everybody? making the blue mage group so that they can form and get the inferno jackets really quickly. They can get the inferno jackets in like half an hour. And pe <laughs> people that are working on Endwalker are just like, okay, 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 cool, bye. Please leave me alone. <laughs> Please leave me alone so I can keep working on the moon. And then the making the moon craters. The scheduling. I mean, being guaranteed at least a new continuation of an event with familiar characters around the same time every year is of course a great start, even if it is nothing special. You know it at least will be there that there might be something new. And it's just added to this feeling that FF is an MMO that is always moving forward and the players are just always looked after a little bit, even when the devs are hard at work on the next expansion. So cute. Like Yoshi P said in the rising this year, what a pleasure it is to welcome you here again and what a privilege that your chosen trail should run alongside mine for so long. And I think the reason the trail runs alongside for so long is because of the quality, of course, but also the stability and the reliable content. These events are just one okay. small part of how <coughs> FF14 keeps it all ticking. I think they're overlooked compared to a reliable patch cycle and good systems. It's a really sweet quote. And then, did you notice when... Uh, actually, never mind. I was going to say... And did you notice when there was only one set of footprints? Fine. Oh, <laughs> but I think we would sorely miss them if they were gone. In a way, that is it. That is actually it for the original <laughs> video. But I do have a final thing to talk to you about. Okay. And no, it's not self-promo for <clears throat> the game we're making, The Pale Beyond. Wishlist it in Steam. It's actually a, a little bit of World of Warcraft. Because I remember World of Warcraft? after the Siege of Orgrimmar, yeah. way back in the day, uh -huh. it was 14 months till Warlords of Draenor came out. Uh -huh. And Blizzard at that time started doing some double XP weekends, some little bonus events for things. I think they did a double Valor month or whatever. I don't remember that. And those did juice up the game a little bit. If you were rolling so a new alt, ago. you'd be like, oh, cool, I'll, you know, I'll level faster or whatever. And while not as creative or involved as what FF14 is doing now, it helped. Oh my and God. that has just made me wonder. World of Warcraft has got its seasonal events. You know, the ones that are based on real world holidays from various regions <laughs> of the world. We've got Chinese New Year. We've got, um, I, I guess, Christmas. We've got, you know, summer, Halloween, all these things. But they've been left to languish. And it's something that came to me maybe a week ago when I was actually thinking about this very video and about FF14. If Blizzard did a World of Warcraft expansion and they said that one of their major features was that every single holiday event in the game was getting a massive amount of work done, then I would think to myself, okay, so not only is the expansion going to come out, not only am I going to get some patches, but I'm always going to get a cool event, a new thing every month. And when we tie that to the core fundamental business model of an MMORPG, I mean, surely it should be in their financial interest to do so. I feel like they got bigger problems right now than putting new presents under the Christmas tree. Okay, like they <laughs> feel like it's going to take a lot more than that to get people to be genuinely interested and hyped about the new. Like, I think people would maybe be mad about that if they're like, hey, guys, we've heard your feedback. And uh, we understand that you're upset about the direction that we've taken with the game, but we are going to make sure that uh, there are new masks available for the Halloween event. And we're going to make sure that for all the uh, 
<laughs> for the uh, Thanksgiving event, there is going to be an option where you can have some um, green bean casserole this time. And uh, <laughs> we can't just make... It's all going to be different. It's all going to be new for the seasonal events. So we're going to put a ton of work into that. Yeah. Because uh, here's the other thing, right? For the, some of the events that he's mentioned, they're all new to him. But I didn't do the broke the uh, brick golem thing again because uh, I've already done that. I uh, did the Final Fantasy 15 event quest again, but I actually had already done that. And so, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that those being new each time are like things that would retain people long term. See if you could do it a little bit better. Right now you've got your weird bonus week system. Well, it's not really that great, is it? And the in-game events have not I shall really name been developed on much, have for nine months. So, Let's take a look at what Yoshi P and everyone's doing. I, I appreciate uh, the, like him so attempting to bars. draw a conclusion from the various fun things that we've had to do in Final Fantasy XIV and sort of trying to tie that back into, well, how can we take, learn some of these lessons and apply them to World of Warcraft? What could World of Warcraft learn from the things that Final Fantasy XIV is doing well? But the fact is that I think Final Fantasy XIV is such a stable and well-loved game right now that all these other things that he's mentioned are just like cherries on top. It's just like, oh, well, all this stuff is fun, too. We're we're all already logged in because we're having fun, but uh, all these other events that we've been experiencing, well, those have been pretty cool as well, but they're not necessarily a foundation upon which to build the survival of your MMO. And so what could World of Warcraft possibly learn for this? I I'm not I'm not as honestly very sure. That final he just thought? seems so sad. <laughs> he seems really sad here at the end where he's just trying to like think of like, well, I mean, wasn't Rom Reborn kind of like cataclysm? <laughs> Oh man. Thank you for watching. I, I really enjoyed the video though. Helped you. It was really fun to watch. Let me know what you think. I really like that.